So one of the most overlooked skills, I think, in algebra and thinking about exponents, and this is particularly something that is going to bite you in the rear end in calculus uh, if we don't get this under our belts, and that is that a radical is not just a radical, right? A cube root is not just a cube root. A seventh root is not just a seventh root. It's easy to understand sort of in our brains what a seventh root is, um, but it's hard to do something with a seventh root the way that it's written as it is here, using a radical sign. So let's back up a few hundred steps. And I just want to ask that classic question, what is the square root of 25? OK, now tell me why the square root of 25 is 5. Because 5 squared is 25. OK, great. Because 5 squared is 25. So if I were to take um, the expression here on the left side and multiply it by itself, basically multiply both sides of this equation by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And since they were equal, that's fine to do, right? And the thing over here on the right, 5 times 5 is 25, mm -hmm. right? Square root of 25 times square root of 25 is 25, right? Can we all agree on that much? Um, okay. So there's a little number called the index of the root that's kind of in the crook of the radical right here. What index belongs right here? What's the secret index in a square root? Two. So I'll put the little two inside of the crook of that radical, just to kind of remind myself. And so now the question that I have is how can I understand what's going on the left side of this equation? On the left side of this equation, I'm squaring something, right? And when I'm squaring something, what power am I raising it to? What does squaring mean? To square something is to raise it to the power 2, right? So another way to understand what I have here is that quantity squared is equal to 25. Yes? OK. And so now the question that I have is, can I think about this in a different way? If I take this square root sign, this radical thingy, and I were to just erase it and replace it by an exponent on top of the 25, What exponent could I put right here in that spot that would make this equation evidently a true statement? 25 raised to what power, if I then square that quantity, is going to give me 25? Why is it 1 half? Yeah, exactly. Right. I want a power of 1 half right there. Uh, so that when I raise a power to a power, Multiplying the exponents is going to cancel out the 1 half and the 2 and give me a power of 1, which is how many powers of 25 I have on the other side, right? So if I follow this rabbit trail all the way back, what does that tell me about the square root of 25? It's the same as what? It's the same as 25 to the power of 1 half. Yeah. Yep. So just following this all the way back. 25 to the power half, 25 to the power half, 25 to the power half. OK, so with that under our belt, this is probably the one that you see the most often, and it's the one that you're going to meet the most often in calculus, right? That the square root of something, anything, can be rewritten as that thing to the power 1 half. Right? Uh, what would that tell me about the cube root of something? What would I have to have done differently here? make it a power of 1 third, because I would have had to multiply the, this thing by itself three times before I canceled it out, right? So the cube root of something is the same as that something to the power 1 third. So the cube root of z squared is otherwise known as z squared to what power? Power 1 third. Exactly. Right. What about uh, the seventh root of z squared? Would it be z squared to what power? One-seventh. One-seventh. Yep, great. z squared to the one-seventh. And I think if you're able to get to there, 
in this problem. You probably can coast the rest of the way, because the rest of this problem is the exponent gymnastics that I think people are more uh, comfortable with. Right? Um, what would I, let's just sort of talk it through. Uh, what would I do with z squared to the power one third? What would I do with those exponents? Yeah, again, power of a power. So I'll multiply these two exponents. z squared, z to the 1 7th. Uh, z 2 over 7. Yes. z to the power of 2 over 7. Right. So I'll have z to the power of 2 thirds multiplied by z to the power of 2 sevenths. And then what would be my last step? Now I'm multiplying these two powers of z. Yeah, now I would add those exponents because I'm multiplying the powers 2 thirds plus 2 sevenths. And there you sort of pull out, you know, you put on your fraction hats, uh, you find your common denominator and, and work that out. Um, so I'm going to take the lazy way out of that and, and just not, I'm going to claim that it's because I don't want to spoil the answer to this problem, but it's really that I'm just going to take the lazy way out uh, and not do that uh, addition for right now because that wasn't the point of this. The point was that first step, right? getting from the radical form into an exponential form for these expressions. Because once it's an exponential form, then we know what to do with them. And that's why questions about radicals belong in the exponent gymnastics section, because radicals are exponents. Um, the shortcut, what's the shortcut? Um, do you see a way that we could have gone directly from here to there? Uh, yeah. Two thirds, two sevenths? Wait, uh, what you call it, the index? The index of the radical. Mm -hmm. Yep, the index becomes